we go. Uh, figured out how to get my iPad on my screen here, as you might be able to see. I figured it'd be fun to have a dumb little <laughs> sketch on there for no, uh, for no real reason other than uh, just to have a little bit of fun. So I am streaming today. And in fact, I should say stream starting now. There, just to erase all that. Shows up nicely on there. 10 out of 10 best stream <laughs> starting screen. <laughs> I'm glad you like it. <laughs> Let's see here. I'm, I'm just showing off that I, uh, not my drawing skill, because that's uh, obviously something that could improve, but uh, <laughs> I'm showing off the fact that I managed to uh, get the iPad screen share working, which I'm really happy with, actually. Because now, it makes me realize that... So I used to, I used to sketch and draw quite a bit um, when I was younger, and I mean, like, even last year, like... Like just like ink drawings with like these are just little wind up toys that I have on my shelf. Like I used to do this a little more, but now that I could like make videos of it with an iPad, um, maybe I should uh, get back into that sort of uh, get into practice with that again. It's a lot of fun, but <laughs> as you can see, I can I can misuse my <laughs> misuse that to make silly little. Um, uh, stream starting soon <laughs> images which I think maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll keep doing it because it's kind of fun anyway whoops come on so this is actually directly on uh, this is this is what I was sketching yesterday trying to show uh, trying to set it up yesterday these are the uh, rabbit and squirrels from a different thing. I'm just leaving them there for no real reason, to be honest. But I want to, while I'm here, let me, um, let me do this. Let me just, I'm just saving this dumb little sketch on a layer so that I uh, can pull it back up if I want to. <laughs> Let's see if I'm, Oop, oop, oop. It's beautiful. It's a masterpiece, if I do say so myself. <laughs> oh, so silly. All right, enough messing around with this. Let me just get this back here. And now, with great power comes great responsibility, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So this um, this app is called uh, Procreate, and uh, I've been using it off and on for a lot of things, and I find it really quite nice. It's really fun to use. So if you're ever into drawing on a digital device and you happen to have an iPad, Procreate is uh, quite a nice app. Not uh, not sponsored, <laughs> just just a fan. What is there? Here I am fiddling with this for no real reason. So let me. Let's kind of have a focus in on. This is kind of a bad drawing, so. Let's just start over a little bit here. So I, yesterday I managed to, um, where am I at here? Oh, let me, um, there. Okay, so got my desk design here. 
Hope everything's going well for you today, by the way. I hope uh, things are good. As you can see, I'm feeling pretty happy. Got another little thing improving on my stream. Another fun little tool here to mess around with. I'm happy with that. Right, so I kind of briefly mentioned wanting to have sort of a truss kind of appearance to the um, to the frame here. So I'm gonna try sketch out what I'm thinking a little bit. So the first thing, if this, if these are the rods on one side, the obvious thing to do is something sort of like this. If I, uh, now I'm gonna switch. Okay, so imagine the top of the desk is here and then the bottom of the tube is there for, um, audio's okay, right? Yeah, it looks fine. This is the metal tube at the bottom, uh, two inch wide base like this. Already getting a little sloppy, so I'll just undo that. Uh, the obvious thing that comes to mind is to do a truss design kind of like this, but that's a little too um, boring. So the kind of cooler idea I had was something sort of like this, where it's actually in a, it's, it's bounded by a 3D box like this and you kind of randomly sample some points and then you make it filled uh, let's see maybe this is a little hard to demonstrate here so you have points and you sample a point on the plane here and then you do say something like this and then you you just kind of make sets of triangles semi-randomly throughout. I don't know if this is way too complex. Maybe this won't look good at all. But this is the idea I had. Kind of... connecting so that you get a volume that's sort of randomly tessellated and then that connects to the, the base and stuff like that. So if I were to look at it, <laughs> instead of an isometric, if I were to try, um, you know what, let's, let's try to clear this up a little bit. If I were to look at just the side view of what I'm suggesting, you kind of randomly create with points here and here for sure, and probably here and here and here, a few along the edges to guarantee reasonable connectivity. And then you kind of have points randomly like this. And then every single point is just connected with triangles to make a sort of web like this. Drawing very scrappily here. something kind of like that. And then the bottom is going to be welded to the tube here. And the top, uh, as long as I have reinforced rods here and here, I can kind of selectively weld pads here and here and here and just bolt those in. Sort of a chaotic and uniquely designed cutout. Yeah, with the little exception that this these um, this sort of network that I'm drawing 
I'm, I'm envisioning it like this. It, let me take a single triangle as an example here. Consider this triangle to be built in this way. So consider this blue, this blue color line just a, a guiding line. And what I'll do is take a really thin rod, like I'm talking probably a 16th of an inch diameter rod, steel rod, and I'll, those are nice. I can bend on a vice grip by hand, so I can bend to nice angles. And the idea I have is something along these lines. If the rod is this here, uh, straight cut here, bent around a corner, bent around a corner, bent around a corner. And so for every triangle here, so one, two, three, four, five, etc., etc., I produce a shape like this that fits the dimensions. And then two triangle pieces, whatever shape they'll be, they'll all be unique. I do a weld here so that they're a solid singular piece. And then there will be some other triangle piece butted right up against it here. And then this is, uh, initially I'm probably going to metal tie it so that I can build the whole thing in one go and then kind of weld it together here. Does that make any sense? Basically, I kind of generate a random array of uh, triangles on, on this volume. Then for each triangle, I run a function that produces the dimensions of this shape. And then I, I make all of those and I tag them with a number and then I assemble them according to the numbered setup from the generated function. This might, I, I think this could look really cool. It'll definitely look unique. Um, and if I can reliably get the triangles to generate, making the singular triangle will actually not be too hard. Making any one of these won't be too difficult. I've in fact, it's easy if you wanna, if you want to butt weld here, the, the, the really simple thing is to do this. You bend this corner first, then you bend this one, and then you've got, then, then you do some final one here when it's loose, when it's small enough wire, you can you can bend and unbend a little bit. You can hammer things to kind of force them into shape, and you just cut a little bit of excess, or you you have excess length rod, and then you just cut the two overlaps at the same point, and then you can butt weld it really close. You can glob it on, and then you just get a grinder, and you just grind it smooth, so it it looks continuous at a quick glance. I've done this before with some other frames, so I know it works. Uh, I kind of am excited to see if I can make this work, because um, it would. I think it would look really cool. Um, maybe it's more trouble than it's worth, but I think it's worth a shot. So I'll spend the day kind of trying to... I think what I'll do is I'll start with the randomization on a 2D rectangle and then I can get the list of triangles from the random set of points pulled from that plane, that rectangle. Then, or maybe I'll do this first, I'll come up with a function that can generate the dimensions for bending the wire around the inside of a, of a triangle. So I think that would be kind of fun. I think that'd be a really, really cool design. I think it's worth a shot. It'll look real nice for sure. I hope so. I do hope so. All right, let me, you know what? I don't know why I delete these. I can just make new layers for free. There's my, my Pokemon <laughs> guy right here. <laughs> All right, so that's, that's where I want to head with things. Let's see if I can make it work.
Okay, so let's switch this over here and get working on some code. Can you tell I'm happy that the drawing is working? I spent a lot of time sketching it today. <laughs> oh man. I feel like uh, like I'm uh, I'm set up to be some kind of like remote based teacher or something, you know. I've got a I've got a virtual blackboard and and I can I can draw diagrams out. Just trying to clear a little bit of desk space here, though. Pokemon's just a real life drawing of the one who will bend the rods, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I've got, <laughs> I've got a really strong, uh, I've got a really strong machoke <laughs> in my employ, and he'll uh, he'll bend any steel pieces to whatever angle you need. <laughs> He'll do it without complaining. <laughs> He's well cared for, well compensated. <laughs> He's my guy. In all fairness, if I actually wanted a bender, I would do... Um, I would... Uh, <laughs> try, <laughs> try for a good old bender. Although, technically, he's... He doesn't do he doesn't do anything that humans want, so <laughs> probably a bad choice. I'm off the rails already. Okay, so um, what might be one of the easiest things to do here? I'll uh, try to generate a random set of points in a in a rectangle. I'll start with that. That seems like a good idea. And then I think with that I'll run the Delaunay triangulation, and I'll display that and uh, see what it looks like. See if it gives me anything good. Because the one thing that could go wrong is the distribution and sort of the aspect ratio of the random triangles might not be very visually appealing. So I might have to, oh, excuse me, might have to fiddle with some things, but that is totally fine. If I go here and I put, um, try plane seems fine to me. thinking let's have us let's start this way it takes a width and a height and it just produces four n Wait a sec, let me think about this. I think this will work. For n range, oh, actually, let's do width, height, n points. Yeah, so for range um, up to n points of n, Actually, I think I can, um, there might be a smarter way to write this, but I won't worry about it for now. Uh, what I want to produce is a random set of points, basically. So I want to just return, um, how does randint work again? Randint takes an, a range, right? 
You know what? Let's. So I have to increase. I have to do this. Um, ink one gets me zeros and ones, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So it's a zero indexed thing. So here I can just do rand int ink w. That's the x value for a random point. And this one is rand int ink. Oh, this is actually a little bit of a problem because um, I don't want to actually do rand int. I want if I just do rand two, is it ah, okay? It does produce. Okay, that's actually what I want. I'm not sure that it's smart to do it this way, but I'll try it first. So rand ink width, rand ink height. That is a randomized point that will be inside a rectangle. And I want to randomly select n number of points. That makes sense, I think. Um, so let's start with just that as its function. Like we'll just start extremely simple and I'll go over here and do a lot of new component here. Try plane component and I'll take make a drawing 2D 700 by 500. We don't need much. This, I think I'll also do that. Scale this to 10 for now. And all I have to do here is um, for point in, you know what, I also don't need to make this a function right away. It's just prototyping. Okay, for point from the result of try plane. Uh, let's do, let's imagine I want to fill it in kind of on the front of this. So I'll just pick I'll just hard code it for now. The width is 57 and the height of it is, oh, let's do 10 because I haven't put that in. The, I actually haven't put that in here yet. Uh, so I'll just hard code it anyway. No big deal. 57 by 10 is the height and let's do 50 points might be a bit much, but we'll see how it appears and uh, just go from there. And all I want to do is create a SVG circle. This is just going to be a 2D view of it, so it, I don't need to use any of the Forge 3D components. I could keep it simple. Circle uh, radius is 2.2, just as a guess. SVG slash translate. Translate. Uh, I did keep the triplane points two dimensional for the time being, so that makes sense. I can just run it. SVG translate takes an XY, not an XYZ coordinate, uh, because the SVG library have works into dimensions, basically. Um, so that I can just pass point, and then I can do SVG slash style element, and let's give it a color of what? Um, Hot pink, why not? Why not? Okay, that will that work the way I expect? I think it should. 
So just to keep this uncluttered for now, I'm going to just comment out every other component and just pull this in here. Try plain component and save it and see if it actually renders the way I want. Oh, look at that. Okay, so that's a start. Oh, it's a little, a little out over there. Let's see here. Why is that? If I just do figure, maybe? Something I'm going weird here with, whoops, not what I meant. Okay. Did I apply a translate somewhere that I didn't anticipate? I always forget what the deal is here. Oh, maybe instead of drawing 2D, if I just do SVG, SVG. It's not wrapped in anything crazy. What's, what's the deal here? Why is it like that? The view box is shifted. I thought I'm just temporarily confused. Uh, sorry about that figure. what's going on I can use figure and I can do this okay there that I think is behaving the way I want it to no I'm sorry I don't know how my functions work I always forget <laughs> uh, what's the deal here um, this shouldn't be a big deal also, there is another problem. Um, well, I, anytime I save, if I make a change and then save, it actually generates new random points. So I kind of only want to generate once or allow myself to kind of re-roll the, the setup to find one that I find visually appealing. Happens to the best of us. You're forgetting how your functions work. <laughs> yeah, oops. My bad. Shouldn't be a big deal, technically. I'm going to assume that things will be fine. So, Uh, let me see here. What I here actually, what I should do is something. I'll just manually translate things. I'll just shift them back manually for now. In the x direction, I'll just cheese it. Should probably be twenty-five. Good enough for right now. It's closer to what I want to see on the screen anyway. Not a huge concern. Uh, now, <clears throat> what I should do is actually change this up a little bit. I'll uh, redo this into um, let points be the result of try plane 57, 10, 50. For point and point, draw the points, right? That's nice and simple. But the more interesting thing now is to um, tries. I want to take triangles from now. I haven't used this in a while. F slash. Four 
horribly, horribly wrong. I uh, have to remind myself where the triangulate function is. Oh, here. Forge Proto. There's the Delaunay triangulation. There's also F slash clip ears, which is probably a worse way to do it, but. Start with that. I actually kind of, I do want to see what this, see if this works. F slash clip ears. Points. I don't know if it'll work. We'll find out soon enough. And actually, I want to render the triangles underneath the for loop for the points. So for try and tries. Again, I could get. I could probably get clever or make this cleaner by running, uh, setting up a function that, like a partial function that. Um, I can just map over the list instead of doing a for loop like this, but uh, it's not too big a deal, really. I'm just messing around anyway, so what's the, in my opinion, there's not a huge concern. Okay, so for triangle and tries, I want to produce the triangle with SVG slash polygon that I'll draw a triangle for me have to translate that by the same amount I should group them together so I only have to apply the translate once but eh, I'm not in the mood <laughs> uh, and I don't need to translate it more than that because the, that should work just as is and I'll fill uh, black, sure. Okay, is it gonna work? Time will tell. The answer is no. I may have broken it. Ooh, web page is slowing down the browser, huh? Well, that's just great. You know what I think is going on? <laughs> My clip ears algorithm is very slow. That's what I think is happening here. Let's wait. Roll the dice on that. Realize maybe I should instead do only uh, 20. And while I'm waiting for that, see if it'll actually respond, let me double check. Oh, just be patient. Um, I need to add another forge dot Delaunay. There's that. Let's eval that. Ooh, Deplani. Wow, what a day. <laughs> It can't handle all the triangles. Yeah, it so um, this is this is the problem with implementing things in a naive fashion. You get the result, but it's not necessarily optimized, and then you get stuff like this, right? It can't handle all the triangles. What I'm almost certain is happening is for every triangle it does, it has to do a lot of checks to see if other points are inside the triangle that it's attempting to add to the list and for every potential triangle I just have it testing every possible point at the moment I'm sure there are optimizations to do to reduce the total number of test checks it has to do but I obviously haven't done any of that so the more points you have the less efficient the ear clipping becomes and I'm technically abusing it uh, as well Delaunay triangulation is almost certainly the correct thing to do here because it's just a random set of points and I just want to draw triangles to connect them all. But 
my clip ears thing is technically only supposed to work for, you know, I'm, I am going to stop it, in fact, because uh, it's not going to do what I want. It's supposed to only clip ears and produce sets of triangles for uh, polygons. So random points in a random order is going to be a really strange looking polygon anyway. So let's just stop this. Oh boy, I've uh, totally messed it up. Let's um, just save that, try to kick this out of its calculation issue here. It should display nothing at all and not be a problem anymore. Please? Yeah, eval timeout. It's still doing it. I've really messed this one up. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Compiling. Might have to uh I need to close the page and reopen it at this point. Yeah, I'm. I think you might be right about that. <laughs> okay, no, we're we're good. We've got it back to normal-ish. Is it re? Uh, still going slow, huh? Oh, here's why. It's still computing this. It's in a for loop here. Bad, 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 bad. There, change it that way. There's still life. There we go. There we go. Perfect. Whew. I feel like I'm uh, uh, doing like uh, CPR and like uh, got the paddles going clear just trying to breathe some semblance of life back into this stupid page that I crashed <laughs> whoops okay so let's uh, change my tune here I'll take the triangles out of the result of Delaney slash triangulate points this should actually work because it's actually the correct algorithm to be using I do have to check that. Okay, that is the right thing to call. And I pass it a list of points, and it gives the map points, triangles, edges. Okay, good. So I do want to just take the triangles and then run tries through this like I had before. Let's save that and see what happens when I uh, do this. Ooh, there we go. There we go. Nice, fast algorithm here. Now I do want to just um, change the uh, style of this for a minute. Fill is the wrong word. I, I don't want any fill. I want fill none, and I want the stroke to be colored black. That's what I want. There we go. So now the obvious issue here is... I so. There's a few things. One, you see this. Uh, at the bottom here, there's, well, I, I'm kind of throughout, there are triangles with a really, really ridiculous aspect ratio. So the width to the height of the triangle is a huge ratio, right? What I want is things to be close to equilateral triangles but not be equilateral I want that to be I want there to be some random deviation uh, but not structurally sound but cool <laughs> uh, I would I would uh, agree with your assessment that it's not uh, structurally sound what is nice is for the where I'm looking to place this in the design uh, oh right I'm <laughs> I'm looking for the, the picture and it's I just have it commented out here. 
You know what? Let me uh, just bring it back in, and I'll just have it beneath this. Below the fold, as it were. Oh, what have I done? What? What's the deal, yo? Well, now I'm confused as to what I've done here. What's going on? Oh, oh, oh. This... I'm messing things up. There's that. That's good. Does this work? No. Okay. This I don't need. There we go. I edited the wrong component. That's probably why this wasn't moving the way I expected it to. Okay, let's try this. Figure. And I will do this. There, okay, that's that is what I was looking for. Ridiculous. Now I can just get rid of this, get rid of this, and that should center it. Okay, there we go, there we go. Kind of a weird thing going on here where, oh. uh, when I make a change, this changes twice. So why would that be happening? I wonder if it's just related to how FigWheel is hot reloading the code. It's a little strange to me though. No, but it's, I won't worry too much about it. So there's kind of two, there's two major things that I, that are popping into my head about this being, about what I have to try figure out next. Got to run to an appointment, have a good weekend if I don't get back. Hey Mike, good uh, luck with your appointment and all that. Uh, thanks for tuning in, I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, hope you have a good weekend too. Thanks for thanks for stopping by. I do like it. Right, so let's see here. Right, I have the aspect ratio problem and I don't have enough points on the edge of the rectangle, which I do need as well. That's what I do need. I'm gonna, you know what? I'm gonna step step away to the washroom for a minute and uh, get myself a little bit of caffeine. I'll be right back.
back at it. Hmm. So I have, I have an idea to change up how I generate the points in this setup here. Instead of doing it completely random like this, what I might do is do an even grid with random perturbations added to the points. So they're all within a, a randomized radius of a central point on a on a normal grid. So maybe that makes sense. What I can do instead is uh, now produce, let me start by making just a normal grid here. So if I do for x range inc w, I think that should work. And then for y range inc y, I don't know that that's going to work correctly. So what if I do range 57? It's every inch. Oh, I need to. I do need to specify the step size, of course. That's um, important, obviously, because if I do not, let me. Uh, let me just do this comment out the triangles just in case here. Oh, it's going to break for a minute. This is going to make a grid one inch by one inch. It's going to be a lot of points, but it should be a grid. Yes. Okay. So that's nice. What's a smarter way to do this though? That's kind of the thought. That's the thing I need to figure out. actually like is let's get the drawing open what I would actually like to do oh going and locking my screen there we go what I would actually like is something like this given the width and height. What I would like is a grid that's guaranteed to have a point exactly here, a point exactly here, a point exactly here, and here. And then I specify x spacing no, that I can't do that. I would have to instead do, um, I can't specify these because they'll be dependent on the total height and the total width. What I would actually want instead is to specify, so if I have an even spacing, I'd see here the way I've drawn this if I imagine XS there it incorrectly puts a point there so I don't want to do it that way what I would actually spe rather specify is um, uh, what, what would what would it be called n points I suppose so I could do one oops one two three four, five, six, seven, by one, two, three, four. That might make sense. 
or I could do uh, instead of specifying the number of points along a direction I could instead do the number of spaces along a section so one two three four five six and one two three in this particular example um, I'm not sure what's more intuitive um, If I say a two by two grid, I, that means this. If I say a three by two grid, it's this, three by two. Therefore, three is the, is the number of spaces. So this is the correct approach to do it, to do it this way. So I specify width, height, um, uh, nx and ny so I would have in this case this is a 6 by 3 grid that's what I want so uh, just checking here Gotta send some messages to friends for a second here. Okay, so this is the approach I want to take. So what does that mean? I have to calculate the spacing and use that as the step size for the grid range, nice and simple. And then I have to generate the points evenly over that spacing. Not too hard, uh, just, have to, just have to do it. <laughs> uh, okay, so So I can keep the range inc w. I just need to do spacing x, spacing y. Oh, uh, when I take a step size, they have to go from 0 to 0 to the width, 0 to the height, spacing x, spacing y. And I just need to have a let here. Oop. Let SX be something, SY be something, which I'll get to in a moment. And then, oops, you just close off the let, do that. For X and for Y, boom, you've got a grid point. And I'll work on making it semi-random once I've got the grid working the way I expect. I think that's fair, right? So the step size is going to be the full width divided by, oh, um, this has to be now two things, width, height, n, x, n, y. OK, so s, x simply has to be the width divided by and x, right? I think it might be, I might have to increment one of those by a bit. But we'll start with that and have a look. See if that makes sense. Uh, now I have to change the call here. Try plane 
Let's do, let's uh, make these numbers a little easier to follow for a minute. We'll do 20 by 10 and we'll do n points. Uh, 10 by five. So it should be a square grid now. Okay. So let's see if this works. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five. It's pretty promising. Pretty promising. Now, what does it do if I have 22.75 and 12.375? It should still work. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Good. That I think is going to be exactly what I need. And I'll just leave it like that for now anyway. Okay, so using that setup. I could I'm gonna do the next easiest thing that comes to mind but before I do that I would actually like now to see what the triangulation of this set looks like ooh that's already pretty cool I kind of like that it's pretty neat if I do say so myself. I'm wondering if there's some cool way that I could mess with the number of points even. I have an idea. This is going to be weird, but I'll try it. Just just to see what it looks like. I'll do um, Can I uh, Can I do drop on a list? Oh, that's not what I meant. Um, I want to just forget singular points at random. Um, let's think, let's be clever, but not too clever. Okay, let me... Well, let's just do this. We'll start something like this. Into vector, that thing, guarantee that it's in a vector. Then um, I can do um, a soch into some vector, Right, let's associate into the key, so the position one, the value nil. Yeah, okay. That's not a, it's a little weird, but uh, we'll give it a shot. Try it. Associ Maybe there's a smarter way to do this. Actually, let me build this into the triplane function directly. How about that? 
that might make more sense because that is where I want to put the logic of this kind of thing anyway. So I'll stick with putting it there. Let's get this back to the dimensions that I'm kind of picturing. Uh, 10 by 57. See how that grid looks. Let's do four here. And actually, you know what? Let's do three and six. Might have to do seven. Eight. Let's do four. You know what, I can, I'll, I'll go a little crazy with it here and I can reduce the numbers as I go. But what I'd like to do is here, mess around with the results of this. So that could be a lot of fun. And let's change this up a little bit. I'll just hard code this in W and X. SY is going to be H and Y. Let points be into vector this whole thing. I have to close the for loop into vector. That's the points. And now here I can transform it. If I do thread first points, and what was I going to do? I was going to a smart approach. Well, let's do it the weird way. I'll just associate into the points. Um, randint count points ink randint count points let's do that associate into a random part of the vector the value nil I want to do that a bunch of times. So let's do let's do it that many times. Okay. Then run that through uh, the result of that through filter. Filter, the pred is complement nil, right? And filter the list that's there. So let's see if that'll actually work. Basically, it should randomly remove points, but keep things exactly aligned in a grid, which is kind of what we see here. I kind of like that. I want to put this into a loop so that it's not as weird looking. Kind of works. It's pretty neat. Very abstract. <laughs> and 
And now let me do one more weird thing where in the setup of the points themselves, in fact, I should actually do this, grid points is this. Then, make a new function here defin randomly remove points so given a list of points given n to remove that's where I want to run this thing which is just going to be let points be for um, Let's do x points is four point in points. Oh, wait a second. Hmm, wait, wait one minute here. Oh yeah. I could do this, I could do it this way. For um, blank range n, all I need you to do is, no, this, now I'm, this is incorrect because it will I have to do this differently. I have to randomly remove one point. No, 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 I can do it like this. Points and I have to make sure I think about this properly. I'll do, um, wait a second. Is there already a remove function that makes this a little bit easier? Not quite, although if I remove nil, I don't have to do filter complements. So one, two, three, nil, five, nil, seven. That'll work, right? Yeah, okay. So that's a little smarter than how I did it. Not by much, but a little bit. So this randomly remove points is gonna use the iterate approach and it'll be basically like this. Um, how does iterate work again? I always forget this, but it is useful. Okay, so it's gonna iterate you. Okay, so I can do this. Uh, I can call f the function that does this thing basically. So it just does. A soch. into let's let's write this out like this function taking points will associate into points ink could I make this one step faster even could I just dissociate yeah this will be better if I dissoc Oh, what did I do wrong? 
dissociate zero. Huh. I'm surprised that didn't work. What's going on here? So why does assoc work but dissoc That's a little strange to me actually. Although I guess it makes sense, right? If I dissoc I guess that's fair. I'll just do it with the associ method that I'm having in my head anyway. Not a big deal, really. Maybe not like the most idiomatic way to do this sort of thing, but I'm gonna be fine with that for now. So this function taking points will associ into the list points uh, by some random thing that will not go out of bounds and will not, should not take anything off the outer edges. So leaving it, leaving the outer part of the grid intact, it should anyway do that. Although it'd be kind of cool if it didn't have to be that way, maybe. Anyway, uh, a soch points increment random integer from oh wait a second yeah no it, it can be an integer this time because it's just indices uh, decrement by one the count of points and associate to that nil And then, actually, let me uh, let me even um, make it just a bit simpler here. This function will take a list of points, thread those points through this function, associ into this spot, the value nil. Then all you have to do is remove. remove um, from oh yeah remove with the pred nil remove nils from the list that you passed in that's the function and then this is just take n of iterate the function f over the points. And that sh should work. So let's give that a shot by redefining this. So now I have grid points and I want to randomly remove points from grid points. And I want to do it 10 times. Is it going to work? I think it didn't work. <laughs> uh, let's see why. Let's have a peek at this. And we'll have a peek at this. So if I do um, try plane, let's do a width of 10 height of 10, and x to be 5 and 5. And I want to randomly remove 10 points. Is that going to be enough? I think it is.
Oh, okay, it almost works. Except here I have to do into vector so that I can run the process over itself again. So this should now work if I think about it. Still no, okay. change it let's do this into vector hey laughing links hi nice closure stream oh thanks so much that's really nice to say uh, thanks for joining in the chat uh, how are you doing today I hope you're well I hope you're well all right let's have a little think about this for a second so I switched this to thread last, which means I can actually take this remove nil like this, right? So remove, you take a pred, and then the next argument is the collection, which will be a vector at this point, because I'm forcing it to be a vector here, remove nil into this. So the only thing I have to change now is actually do uh, a soch because a soch is the other way around. Let's see if this works. Laughing links, you're doing pretty well. Hey, I'm glad to hear it. Uh, what brings you to this stream? Do you do you use closure yourself? Love closure. Pretty lost on what are you doing right now. First time here after finding and following for closure dev. Well, thanks for uh, following me and uh, glad to hear you found me. If you give me if you permit me one minute to test out what I'm doing, I can actually give a bit of a explanation as to what I'm trying to achieve here, if you're interested. It's a little hard to follow today, for sure. I can, uh, I can understand how this is confusing. Give me one second to test this out, and I will, uh, I'll give you a bit of an explanation. But, uh, you know, I'm glad you're here. It's uh, really cool. And it's fun to hear um, other people saying they love Clojure. I am obviously biased, but I super, super love Clojure as well. It's just really fun to work in. I am um, self-taught, so you know, take what I say and do as with a bit of a grain of uh, pinch of salt, as as it were. Uh, I think I'm more and more comfortable with using it as the days go by. But you know, there might be things that you think are strange that I'm doing. Just please understand that. <laughs> You know, I'm self-taught, so maybe there are gaps in my knowledge. But I think this function should work now. It does not. <laughs> no worries. Don't need to go over everything. Might have to go AFK at some point. That's cool. It's still, I think, worth explaining. So just let me mess around with this thing one more time, and I'll then I'll show you what's up. Let's try... Okay, so that should work. Let's only remove two though, let's try that. Huh, okay. Oh, I have to do this. Oh, wait a second, I'm thinking, I'm doing something a little backwards here. Uh, take last of this. Not an expert either, just started using Emacs this year. Know a slight amount of 3D programming. 3D, slight amount of 3D programming, what, uh, what do you mean by that, what do you do? Oh, okay, so here we go. This. Now my function is doing what I want it to, at least I think so. Hey, look at that, sweet. Okay, so this particular function here is taking a grid of points that have, uh, that I've specified a width, a height, and a, a grid spacing in the X and Y. 
I went through some tutorials on WebGL and OpenGL. Okay, gotcha, fair enough. So the, um, let me show you, broadly speaking, the kind of 3D programming uh, that I do. I do what's called programmatic CAD, CAD being computer-aided design. And um, what I'm working on here, what I'm using Clojure for specifically, I make these, so I used to be a mechanical engineer. And by used to be, I just mean I'm not currently doing engineering work. I'm doing programming stuff. But I would design industrial structure stuff like greenhouses and I would do mechanical pump systems. So I got really used to using 3D uh, CAD programs like SolidWorks. Then I discovered something called OpenSCAD, which I consider to be a really, it was an eye-opening paradigm where um, you write a script and it produces a 3D model. In fact, I have OpenSCAD here. OpenSCAD is the correct way to say it. And if it loads, which it should, I can show this a little bit here. If I do, here's a good example. This here is OpenSCAD. Let me, uh, let me bring it into its own window so that things are a little easier to see here. If I go view, um, edit, where's the show editor thing? Okay, here we go. So this program, OpenSCAD, lets you write scripts that produce 3D models, I, like I said. So what does that mean? Let me give an extremely simple example here. This is not my code. It's an example module that, you, that comes in with OpenSCAD. By the way, open source, free to download. It's available for anyone. It's really popular with people who design um, 3D printing um, stuff. Uh, but here, so this module is the OpenSCAD logo, which you see right here. It is parametric on the um, uh, diameter of the sphere, I think. So if I change it to 20 and then refresh the view, you see that it changes pretty much in real time. If I, like I could just refresh it with the, the function key here. Boom, you see that? So that is, the, the whole idea is the power of programmatic CAD is you can make parametric models. The one I was looking at is designed with closure, I think. The dactyl. Ah, yes, yes. I know exactly what you're talking about. In fact, dactyl was created by um, the author of, I'm pretty sure it was the author of, uh, SCAD CLJ. Now this is a closure library that basically leverages OpenSCAD. So this dactyl keyboard, it was designed, you're exactly right, it was designed in Clojure. This is the one I'm sure you're referring to, right? So these, this here is an OpenSCAD model. The cool thing was it was designed using this Clojure library and I know this because I've watched the talk on, I want to say it was Strange Loops that someone talked about this. Anyway, it this library basically transpiles or like it emits uh, it emits OpenSCAD uh, files, and and so it was designed both in Clojure and OpenSCAD. So. The concept that the dactyl keyboard uses is precisely the kind of thing I'm trying to build into my pipeline here. With the additional ideas of, so my, sorry, my screens are all over the place. Apologies for the rapid changing around here. I also want to, I wanna add a little bit of, um, 
power into creating design documents. And so my idea is related to stuff like this. This is a uh, React web app, and it's a document that I build in Clojure. And I can, the idea is I pass in a model, which is a certain setup of a closure map, and I can connect uh, the values of different parts of the design to different UI components here, and it can fully adjust the SVG you see here. React is most of my closure usage. So actually, my uh, it's one of my weaker knowledge areas. I don't consider myself a web dev, so I, uh, in fact, what I'm doing, it ostensibly uses web technologies, but I don't really consider it web apps per se. It's more like an enriched document producing mechanism. I kind of want to have programmatic CAD mixed with the good ideas from like Jupyter Notebooks to produce um, parametric CAD models that are simultaneously the design documentation and the um, parameter configuration and the download for step files and stuff. That seems like a lot of weird stuff to combine, but I think it can be an extremely powerful way to make uh, open design documents that let you download, say, step files so that you can bring it into um, a CAD environment at your, you know, at professional manufacturing places and stuff like that. So that's the dream. Uh, and let me show you one more little example of what I what I mean by this. I have um, a dumbbell design here. Uh, again, these are there's still a lot for me to learn, so a lot of this is a work in progress. But here you see I can even rotate this in 3D. I have two components here where you can kind of specify different things independently. And here you can see the thickness of this plate uh, necessarily changes the length of the handle here. So that's all captured in the code that produces this document. And uh, in, in the future, there will be a nice little uh, download PDF or something or download uh, drawing file and download 3D model. That's really the goal here. So you can read the documentation that has um, explanations as to why you make certain design decisions and then you can scroll look at all the parts look at all the things that are configurable and then download a model and bring it into whatever workflow you need so that seems really nice to me um, that's the that's the dream <laughs> that's the dream uh, open SCAD is a good example of a fun tool that helps with it uh, there's other software that I use called FreeCAD that um, lets you look at step files and stuff like that. So it's all coming along pretty nicely if I do say so myself. I also have, um, if you'll indulge me, just a little more, just a GitHub page, it's a work in progress. Everything's always a work in progress. Uh, I have some older examples of this idea. This is an old project now, but I wrote this up uh, use scrap steel, and this was done in Python at the time. Uh, but I have 3D interactive models of the parts here, and the code that generated it, and uh, three different models that you can view, all the code, then an assembly view, and this this set of parts I actually uh, managed to manufacture. So it, like, it can be used in real design. So pretty happy about that. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. Uh, back to today's work, I'm trying to make myself a design for a new desk. So in particular today, I'm trying to get a little bit creative with some triangulation randomization to make a cool kind of a cool looking panel basically. Hopefully that makes a bit of sense. 
Uh, hopefully you didn't go AFK for the whole explanation. I mean, no, no fault of yours, of course, but <laughs> uh, no fault of yours. If you missed anything, uh, you go ahead and ask again. I can uh, always explain stuff. I'm happy to. Happy to explain. Got most of it? Cool. Yeah, um, feel free to ask any clarifying questions, anything that wasn't clear at all. Um, could do my best to explain a little more clearly if that's, if that's what you need. The, the design today is, this is the a work in progress of, I wanna replace the desk I'm working on. Um, it's a little wobbly. So I wanna make a cool looking welded metal frame with, with kind of a, I wouldn't call it a truss, but sort of a random triangle set up here. The idea is each triangle I'm gonna make with, I'm gonna bend uh, 1 16th steel rod into the triangle shapes and weld them all together uh, to make these grids and then they become the four panels or three panels sorry like this here a panel here panel on the back side panel back here uh, might be a really hard design to pull off but I think it could look extremely cool uh, and uh, it's fun to try a little bit of randomized generation of, of designs. I think that could be really neat. This particular element does not need to be structurally sound because the structure will be held up by uh, welded posts in the corners of the desk here. And the legs of the desk will be nice and firmly attached to the bottom part of this frame. So all of the structural components will be basically handled elsewhere. So uh, this doesn't have to be super strong, but I want it to be a, I want it to be a cool aesthetic. We'll see if I can pull it off. <laughs> That'll be the fun part. Okay, so with that, the next thing I want to do is so the grid components, I haven't moved, I haven't, I want to kind of perturb the position of the points randomly plus or minus a little bit. So that'll be what I do next. Uh, but first, I'm actually going to step off and go to the washroom. I'll be like two minutes. I won't be long.
All right, back at it. By the way, just to toot my own horn a little bit, this, be right back. A little animation that was done in my uh, little library here too. Managed to do some extrudes into 3D and I oriented it and uh, produced a bunch of frames and then used FFmpeg to, to, to connect all the frames together into an animation. Proud of that little experiment. I think it looks pretty neat. So there'll be more, uh, more little stream animations for that in the future, but yeah, it was a fun little thing to do. All the same basic code. Really pleased with that. Okay. Let's perturb the points for a moment by doing, looking at the wrong thing here. I wanna go up here. These here, I'll just do, I think this will work. If I just do X plus Um, hmm. Let's do X plus uh, minus one Rand two. Does that make sense? It could make sense. And we'll do the same with Y. So I get a random perturbation in a one inch radius around every point. Since that's in a four loop here, that should, and the indentation was way off on that one, that's my bad. That should, since it's in the for loop, it should apply the random thing properly to every point. Whoa. Cool, but not correct. <laughs> uh, what did I what did I miss here? Why is it like that? Oh, didn't change this to Y. That's the first problem. Then it might be one a uh, radius of two might be a little bit aggressive. Although that looks pretty nice. Let's do, um, let's do a radius of, of one inch only around these. Let's try to rein it in a little bit. So that's, that's pretty good if I do say so myself. And in, what if just temporarily I uh, take this part out and there's, there is one thing I will have to fix, and that is looking solid. Got to take off. Thanks for the stream. Hey, Laughing Links, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for joining in the chat. I really appreciate that. Hopefully, I'll see you around. Um, no pressure, obviously, but uh, got to take off. Have a good one. Have a good weekend. I hope all is well with you. Check out some clips later. Yeah, go right ahead. I have all of the VODs on a VODs channel, too. So if you wanna poke around there, mess around with that, you go right ahead. Uh, no pressure, no obligation. You know the drill though. <laughs> Once again, thanks. I appreciate you tuning in. Okay, so what was I doing? Oh yeah. What do the grid points look like without the... That's, even that is pretty cool. A little strange, but pretty cool nonetheless. The issue is um, the issue is I want so all the gr all the points that are along the perimeter of the shape. I need to not go outside of those bounds. So I have to put a little bit of logic in to check that situation. So um, 
the first thought coming to mind is uh, conditionals in the for loops. I don't know if I like that though. The other option other option is uh, let me think about it in a, in, a, in a minute I like this though I think this is a cool way to go forward I think that looks really neat Pretty cool, if I do say so myself. And most of the triangles are not too crazy when it comes to the aspect ratio, which I really do like as well. Uh, these triangles along the bottom here, I would manually, like I would just decide I don't need those. So when I'm building this, those ones can be uh, eliminated entirely. In fact, it might be smart to filter triangles by aspect ratio cutoffs or something like that, uh, but that's not something I'm going to put in today. I think I'm reasonably happy with this uh, random generation approach for the time being. So what I want to do next is actually figure out a way to, to draw in I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I know. I'm gonna try for Let me just see if this will actually work the way I want. For each triangle here, I wanna produce, I wanna do two things. Actually, I want to first, well, first of all, let me, I'm going to reduce the number, the numbers of the grid size. Oh, that's maybe a little too, a little too aggressive of a uh, culling there. <laughs> um, that's pretty good. 12 is too much, 10 is probably good. You know what, 10 and four is right around the ballpark of what I want. Okay, so I'm gonna do one thing here, SVG slash G. I'm gonna group all these into their own uh, group element. Nothing crazy about that. Let's undo that, put this here. I'm gonna translate this down ever so slightly, SVG slash translate this whole set of things down by two. And this, got to add one of those. Hopefully that's correct. There we go. Good. <laughs> and we'll do by one as well. There we go. It's now I can see everything. Again, I'm going to figure out a way to filter out those really bad trying aspect ratio triangles there. I just, I will not use those. I don't need them. Um, so those have to be eliminated somehow, but problem for another day. This now, should be, uh, right. For the triangles I wanted to do, group these. I want to do two sets of triangles. The first is the triangle itself, and the second is an offset calculation. Got to close the for loop there. 
uh, this offset calculation will happen here if I do um, f slash offset try. Uh, let's do a quarter inch to make it really obvious, and the stroke will be blue. Is that going to work? Oh, wow, it did. That looks neat. Okay, I am already very happy with how this is looking. It's starting to look very cool. So, uh, again, obviously, barring these really, I keep bringing it up, the aspect ratio triangles here, the, the really, really thin triangles, are they have to be ignored or filtered out somehow. So this glitchy look at the top here, um, I'm going to ignore for the time being. But that, that looks cool. So I'm more and more excited about this idea. I am pretty pumped about what it could look like. I also am realizing, so I want to do this with rod and kind of manually bend everything and put it together that way. And I want to do it in a volumetric approach, not just in 2D. So I have to, I do have to approach that somehow intelligently yet, which I'll get to at some point. But the other thing I'm realizing is it would be really cool to export this to a DXF file and get it flat cut with the plasma table. And then I've got this sort of geometric mesh shape in 2D. So the panels would just be two dimensional, but it would still have this really kind of semi-organic look to it. I think even that would be pretty cool. Um, so, but the offset here, I actually want to be an eighth is really small, probably too small. Hmm. Hard to know, hard to know. I wonder what happens if I don't show those triangles. I only show the blue ones. Pretty cool. Technically incomplete in the sense that, like I would need to trace the outline of this, do the convex hull of it, uh, in order for it to be a valid cut shape, if that makes any sense. Starting to come together though. In fact, an eighth is not even what I want here. I do want a sixteenth, right? Um, actually, I have to I have to check something. that I have a digital caliper here. I don't know if the power still, yeah, still works.
and I have I made a simple backpack mod some time ago with some uh, I made a steel rod frame that I put inside there so the so it holds its shape and this is the rod I'm picturing using and I was just measuring the diameter of it to check my assumptions I thought this was an eighth or a sixteenth even but that's really thin as it turns out boy this is not clean I have to really clean this that's okay turns out it is 1.875 or 0.1875 inches which is uh, one-eighth plus a sixteenth it's three sixteenths right I think that's right let me uh, let me do the fraction in my raffle for a minute and find out gotta love the caliper fantastic tool makes things a little easier than just guessing all right so Three divided by sixteen is. Oops. <laughs> Thanks, closure. Uh, yeah, eight seven five. It's that was my mistake. Right. So in fact, this offset, if I want to represent the um, true thickness of of a uh, one of the rods that I'll be using, I have to make the offset 0.1875, then it'll look kind of like this. So the black and blue, the distance between the black and blue, that is the rod fits exactly inside there. And then the black lines are two triangles butted up against each other. That's, the, that's what this diagram kind of represents. And then these pink dots here are just imaginary. They will be, they'll basically be, um, since the rod will be uh, bent, it'll have some radius to it. Those will most likely be little star-shaped sort of connection points there. They won't, I could weld them shut or I could leave them open. I think I'll leave them open. That'll look pretty neat. You know what, as a, generative sort of design this is coming together fairly nicely I think it could look really cool okay so I'm trying to think if there's an easy ish way for me to make the rod extrude program. I'm a little concerned that that's more, that's gonna be a little bit harder because when you bend steel, it's got a K factor for the deformation about around the bend, right? I cannot, without cutting and mitering, I cannot produce a perfectly sharp corner like this. So I will need to draw in, in 3D2, I will need to draw in some uh, arc, like half, like a part, partial torus shape around that bend, technically. And I don't know, I don't know if my uh, library is quite set up to handle that very effectively. Certainly not perfectly. Hmm. So I have to think about that a little bit. Um, hmm. <laughs> I don't think I'm entirely ready to do that <laughs> today. So what might be a good idea is to try, see if I can, well, first of all, maybe it's a good idea for me to filter out these 
really weird edge problems here. That might be a good idea. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. Okay, so in order to do that in an effective way, I want to have, um, okay, so I've got bounding volume dimensions, diffin, Bounding volume aspect ratio can just be, it'll actually just be apply divide to bounding volume dims of shape, which I have to pass the shape in like this. That should work. And then what I need to do is find a cutoff for to filter out these triangles. So I'll do that in I realize I am going to have to bring some of this logic into the triplane function directly. Uh, but I'll worry about that after the fact. I'm just getting closer and closer to what I really want to see and then I'll wire it up in a more appropriate manner. So to do that, to do this, basically here, I can just do filter on the predicate. Hold on. There is a mistake in my logic. Um, I'm going to change this up slightly. I need F slash bounding box. Bounding volume dims. Let's make a similar function. Bounding box dims. It's going to be confusing. Bounding volume, mm, I'll, uh, points, I'll be okay with it for now. F slash bounding box, bounding box corners 2D. I'll call it 2D like this. Bounding box corners 2D. The idea is exactly the same. It's just thread uh, points through bounding box corners 2D, reverse, apply F slash V minus. That's the same idea that gets me the bounding volume, or pardon me, the dimensions, so the width and height of the bounding box. And then bounding box aspect ratio If I 
just send it points is just going to be thread points through. It would actually apply divide to the result. An aspect ratio is the width divided by the height. I guess it doesn't matter technically. Um, Mm, wait a second. It might matter. Let's do it this way. Basically, I want aspect ratios that are closer to one. So for the purpose of filtering out aspect ratios where it's really, really big or really, really small, I can s apply divide to sort by uh, max yeah sort by max the result of bounding box dims 2d of the points that's the aspect ratio then define um, thin shape. That's the pred. So I'll give it actually thin polygon and I'll give it points and then here what you do is um, you just check you get the aspect ratio and check if it's much larger than some cutoff and the cutoff I don't know yet I'll tune it in a minute so the you check if the bounding box aspect ratio is much greater of, of the points is greater than something which let's try 100 for now it's probably even bigger than that but I'll start with that okay so here now I can go in theory through the triangles. Tries is going to be filter. You're going to take the triangles there and you're going to run it through filter. Filter. Pred, pred collection. So I have to thread last for simplicity here. Filter the triangles list through um, or with the complement of the pred thin polygon question mark that's the question you ask let's see if it works maybe <laughs> can't tell uh, let's go have a peek at so there's still really thin triangles here which tells me that the ratio is probably much bigger here than what I need or the cutoff sorry is too small at the moment that's maybe what's happening let's try a thousand looking a little more promising see that this doesn't look too bad let's try even 10,000 100,000 okay I'm doing something wrong 
Although it's starting, starting to look a little better. You know what I should do, actually, is um, generate, I should do this in the REPL here. I should create, this is what I should do. I'll run the function try plane, right? I'll do a width 57, a height of 10, nx 10 and y4. Okay, and now for all of those, I should map bounding box aspect ratio over these. Oh, wait a second. I need to do this. Triangles from uh, Delaunay slash triangulate those points. Map bounding box aspect ratio over those. Okay, so these ratios are the opposite of what I intended. I should instead sort by min here, right? Maybe I'm wrong about that as well. Oop. I, I feel like I'm missing something. I'm doing something a little bit silly here. Hmm. Oh, promising. Nope. Still getting glitches. Okay, if I uh, sort by max, how does that work for me? If I have 10 and 21. Okay, then if I apply, <clears throat> excuse me, divide to this, it's small. But if I apply divide to sort by min, What am I missing here? Sort by min, 10, 1. Sort by max. So this doesn't work the way I expected. Um, Sort by max reverse. Okay, so it does reorder things. What am I what am I missing here? Sort by max and sort by min do the same thing. And I don't know why. What am I missing? I'm doing something wrong, I think. 
Oh, you know what I should do? I should actually just do this. Sort uh, 10, and one, 10 and 2 should do it min to max, right? And then just reverse it. So I'll do that instead. So if I go, because I just want to use a really big number, right? So I'll change it this way. So if I do, let's guess 100 for the aspect ratio cutoff. I can work on that. Uh, just mess around with that to check. But here, the aspect ratio, I should just sort it. Reverse, the, reverse it. And that should give me a large number aspect ratio. OK, promising. Now, if I run that setup, I should test it here for a minute. Um, where am I at? OK, so these numbers are ranging upwards now. So let's see. I'm seeing one point something is in the good is in a good range in my opinion. Uh, it looks to me like, well, you know what? Let me just do. Let's apply apply max to this. 182. Oh boy. So I'm just randomly running this a few times. The lowest number I've seen so far was 45, largest 351. So let's make the cutoff 40 as a rough guess. And in general, I should see less of this problem. If I make it 10, is that a crazy cutoff? 10 might be a good cutoff. Oh, I'm still getting this weird slice in those spots here. If I make it 5, just go wild with it. Ooh, okay, that might have been the magic number for me. Man, that's looking great. That's starting to look like what I want. Oh man, this okay. This is uh, I'm getting pretty happy with this. To be, to be completely honest, I'm very pleased with how this is coming out. I do wonder if I could even start to go a little crazy with. Uh, what am I looking at here? Probably going to get going in about uh, 10 to 20 minutes in that range. Uh, kind of quit while I'm happy with the results, too. <laughs> um, what was I thinking of doing? Oh, uh, yeah. This here, I want to see what if I double this up again here with a random range between 2 and negative 1. Or if I increase the radius around which you can perturb the points, will that look nicer? That's my question to myself. This is looking so good. I'm super jazzed about it. just had a little realization about one thing I could do to guarantee some nice point positions, if that makes any sense. Right, so what I could do is take this list and conj some things into that. So what I'll do into vector and then I want to concat
think hard coding a few points that I need is not a bad idea. So I want to guarantee that I have two connection points at zero. Um, let me think about this. I want basically four points. The first is some x value and guaranteed zero on the y. The second one is some other x value and zero there. Then some x value and guaranteed it has to be at the height x and the height. And each of those x points I want oh I want to do it this way. Each of these x points I want to be kind of random. So if I do rand uh, can be between 0 and half the width. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. Okay, so rand up to uh, width divided by 2. That's that x value, and this x value is going to be similar. except it has to be plus half the width to make sure it's in the second half. Does that make sense? I think that's good. Cool. And then uh, similarly, this one will be the same and this one will be the same as that. So that's four connection points that are guaranteed to show up kind of in this spot and in this spot, this spot, and this spot. And that should make a, I think that'll work the way I want it to. Oops, have to close the function. Okay, hard to tell. Um, what should I do about that? Oh, I know, in here I wanna draw one final thing. Where am I at here? Okay, um, rectangle with the size of, actually, you know what? Let me be lazy and do polygon, zero, zero, width, zero, where I've hard coded it everywhere. It's gonna be 57, zero. Oh, uh, hold on, I'm getting a phone call. This might be important. That was a spam call. Very frustrating. Don't like that stuff. Try to be polite, but it's seriously not cool. Not cool at all. Like, uh, so I was being polite saying I don't need this and they it literally hung up. So like, it's very clear what they do. You know, they just, they just try to get Susceptible people, ridiculous. I, uh, I have very little respect for people who, who try to profit off of that kind of stuff. It's not cool, even a little bit. I get frustrated by that stuff. Okay, so um, let me shift my mind back to something a little bit more 
wholesome. <laughs> uh, oh, this is wrong. Um, 57, 57, 10, and 0, 10. So this, I'm just putting in a uh, red. Oops, I forgot to do this. Nope, not what I need. I need to do this. There we go. Fill none stroke red. So this, ooh. Interesting. Something went wrong here a little bit. So it looks as if I have, well, I've made a mistake, obviously. Guaranteed, so I've got one exactly in the right spot on this half, which makes sense. And I have this one on this half, which also makes sense. This one, I've got one that makes sense here. And this one here is exactly right. These other ones are just coincidentally pretty close. Now the problem is, it's very clear that I have a situation where grid points can be offset past their bounds, and that's a problem, um, which I have to obviously fix. Um, That'll be true even if I, hmm, I don't know. I do know, well, let's try one little thing. I gotta get going soon, but I think this could work. Here, if I take range starting at ooh drop one of this range and instead of ink w I just go w Risky proposition. Let's see if that changes anything for me. Ooh, mistake. Okay, we're on the right. No, this is wrong. So what I'm trying to do is just sneakily uh, get rid of s the top and bottom of the grid selection process here. It doesn't look like it's the smart approach. It really reduces my point set too much. It's also not working on the bottom part here technically. Oh, I know maybe what I can do. Um, let's do it this way. And we'll increase these. It's guaranteed. It's all inside now, but that's not a good spread. Looks, it does look pretty cool, I'll admit that, but the points are not connected. Oh, I have now, I have an idea. Um,
Here's what I'll do. This, by the way, I should move into another function. This here, I want to, I don't need to put it into a, uh, yeah, I, I can actually just do this. Last of that is now correct. <laughs> Basically, instead, of doing this weirdness, I could do something like this. I could concat, oops, not what I meant. Um, let's not remove any of these just for the time being. Basically, grid points is something, but first, See what this looks like. Oh. Pretty cool. Basically, I want to do this. I want edge points to be um, Yeah, I'll do it. I'll do this the sort of lame way. Uh, for x in range 0 to, oops, 0 to inc w divided by w and x. Okay, for each of those x values, just do, um, oops, just return to me. x and y is 0. Do the same thing for x is at height, then do the same for y. Fine, and then let's try to run this setup where I do concat randomly remove points from grid points. Oh, I have to specify a number. Let's do 30. And then here, randomly remove points from edge points, uh, 10. Made a mistake here. The 
save that. Promising. Pretty promising. Okay, that's that's more what I need to see. Not bad. Okay, um, this is gonna be it for me for the day. Uh, this is something really great to run with. I'm happy with the result. Thank you anyone who's tuned in and joined in chat. I really appreciate that. Um, I will be back again on Monday. Uh, I hope everyone has a great weekend. Um, by the way, if you're hearing this at all, consider uh, sharing this around the VODs and or the Twitch stream itself to people who might enjoy watching and participating in the growth of this channel. People who like programming, people who like Lisp languages, people who like design, and people who like 3D modeling and uh, manufacturing and that sort of stuff. I am excited every time I stream and I want to keep things growing and uh, you know, People can participate in that if they want. I would love that. That's all I got to say, though. I am going to have a great weekend. I hope you all do as well. Have a good time. <laughs> have a good one. <laughs> Bye.